Hello students, welcome to our APS classes and as all we know that this is our foundation course that is specially for 9 to 12 and in our today's lecture we will discuss about the diversity in the living world that is the chapter for class 9th and this is our lecture number 2 and in our lecture number 2 we will discuss about the kingdom animalia this is the kingdom animalia and this is our lecture number 2 but in our previous lecture we have already discussed about the kingdom uh, planta and uh, today we will continue with our lecture number 2 with the kingdom animalia and this is our chapter number 7 for class 9th and the name of the chapter is the diversity of the living boy so there are various kingdoms that are involved in the kingdom animalia first we will discuss discuss about the kingdom animalia so in kingdom animalia the first we will take about the animalia kingdom animalia is made up of eukaryotic multicellular heterotrophic organisms that means your kingdom animalia is made up of eukaryotic multicellular heterotrophic organisms and the most important significant feature of the animalia that is their mode of nutrition is holozoic. Holozoic means they are either herbivorous or carnivorous. They are either herbivorous or carnivorous. If they are herbivorous that means they totally depends upon the plants for their food but if they are carnivorous then they depends upon the depends upon the flesh for their food. So the most important feature in the animalia is they are the mode of nutrition is holozoic that means they are either herbivorous or carnivorous. Most animals are in animalia are motile. Motile means they can move independently in search of food, shelter and, as well as mate. So there uh, in this animalia the most animals are motile and they can move independently especially in search of food shelter as well as in search of mate next is animals are made up of many organ systems animals are made up of many organ systems that aids performing specific functions and these specific functions are specially necessary for the survival of the organisms that means on the behalf of these specific functions they are necessary for the survival of the organisms most of the animals are bilaterally symmetrical that most of the animals under the animalia are bilaterally symmetrical that means their body is bilaterally symmetrical while primitive animals are asymmetrical most animals in animalia are bilaterally symmetrical but the primitive animals they are asymmetrical and Synedrians and echinoderms are radially symmetrical. So this is the animalia. Here kingdom animalia is made up of the eukaryotic multicellular as well as heterotrophic organisms. Their mode of nutrition is holozoic and they are either herbivores or carnivores. Most animals are motile and they can move in search of food, shelter as well as mate and animals are made up of many organ systems that they are performing specific functions that are necessary for the survival of the organisms. Next is porifera. Next is porifera. So porifera, this phylum consists of the sponges. All the sponges, they fall under the phylum porifera. They are mostly marine. Very few are freshwater. Majority of them are marine, but mostly uh, few of them are the freshwater but uh, the majority is of marine and only few are freshwater all the animals are sessile sessile means they are fixed in one place they are fixed in one place so the maximum animals in porifera they are sessile and uh, sessile means that means they are fixed in one place cells are loosely arranged the cells are loosely arranged cellular grade of the organism organization and here the mode of organization is the cellular mode of organization animals 
ones are diploblastic. With outer ectoderm, they are diploblastic. With the uh, outer ectoderm and inner endoderm, that is held with jelly-like mesoglia. That is held with jelly-like mesoglia. Exoskeleton in the form of spicules. Exoskeleton that is in the form of spicules, and these spicules are made up of silica or calcium carbonate. So here, exoskeleton that is in the form of spicules. And these spicules are made up of either silica or calcium carbonate. Or calcium carbonate. So here the exoskeleton that is in the form of spicules and these spicules are made up of silica as well as calcium carbonate. Next, sponges have pores. That means the most important characteristics of the sponges that they have pores all over the body and body pores are called as ostia. These body pores are called as ostia. So sponges have pores all over the body and these body pores are called as ostia. Water from the outside enters the body. The most important characteristics of the sponges is that water enters from outside the body through these ostia water that is enter outside the body that water enters through the body with the help of these ostia and lives through one large opening and live one large opening and that opening is called as osculum that large opening is called as osculum that means yahan jo water hai body mein inki jo enter karta hai wo water jo enter karta hai wo enter karta hai with the help of ऑस्टिया और जो वाटर लिव करता है उनकी बॉडी से वो लिव करता है एक स्पेशल टाइप की लार्ज ओपनिंग होती है जिस ओपनिंग को क्या कहा जाता है ऑस्कुलम दिस इज द डायग्राम ऑफ द स्पॉन्जेस एंड स्पेशली मेराइन स्पॉन्ज दिस इज द डायग्राम ऑफ द मेराइन स्पॉन्ज एंड दिस मेराइन स्पॉन्ज हैज पोर्स ऑल ओवर द बॉडी पोर्स ऑल ओवर द body and water enters from outside through the ostia and the water lift from the body with the help of a osculum so this is the diagram of the marine sponge next important kingdom under the kingdom animalia is the cylindrata cylindrata these animals are aquatic mostly marine those animals which fall under the cylindrator these are mostly aquatic and these are mostly marine they are solitary or clonial they are solitary or clonial and each individual is known as zooid each individual is known as zooid animals are readily symmetrical animals are readily symmetrical this is the next important feature of the cylindrator that is the animals are readily symmetrical Sessile forms are called as polyps. Whatever the sessile forms that are present in the cylindrata, these are known as the polyps. And free living forms, these are called as the medusa. These are called as medusa. Free living forms. So free living forms are known as medusa. Cells are organized into tissues. That means tissue grade of organization is present in the cylindrata. Cells are organized into tissues. And when these cells are organized into tissues, uh, and on the behalf of that reason, they have tissue level of the organization present in the cylindrata. Animals are diploblastic, outer ectoderm and inner endoderm. Animals are diploblastic and they have outer ectoderm as well as inner endoderm present in them. Mesoglia separates these two layers with the help of mesoglia. These two layers are to be separated, and without mesoglia, these two layers cannot be separated. The body has single opening, and that single opening is called as hypostome. The body of the cylindrata these have specially single type of the opening present in the body, and this single type of the opening is called as hypostome. That is surrounded by the sensory tentacles. This is surrounded by the 
sensory tentacles sensory tentacles these are the sensory tentacles so this is the salentrata after the completion of the salentrata next important characteristic of the salentrata body cavity sinum act as gastrovascular cavity body cavity sinum specially known as the gastrovascular cavity and this gastrovascular cavity is known as salentrain special type of the cells called as nematocysts are present for capturing and paralyzing the prey present in the tentacles with the help of these tentacles with the help of these tentacles they are specially used for the capturing as well as paralyzing the prey so these special type of the tissues are called as nematocysts and with the help of these special types of the cells uh, that are known as nematocysts they are present for capturing the prey as well as paralyzing the prey that are present in the tentacles and common examples of the salentrata are hydra jellyfish corals obelia and sea anemone these are the common examples of the salentrata such as hydra jellyfish corals obelia as well as sea anemone and these are the diagrams or these are the diagrammatically representation of the salentrata this is the sea anemone and this is the jellyfish so here this is the structure of the sea anemone and this is the example of the salentrata and this is the jellyfish and the jellyfish is the example of the salentrata so these are the examples of the salentrata next important phylum is platyhelminthes next important phylum is the platyhelminthes so this phylum consists of the organisms that are bilaterally bilaterally symmetrical so platyhelminthes is the phylum that is consists of the special types of the organisms that are specially bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic as well as flattened their body is totally flattened triploblastic body is divided into three parts they are bilaterally symmetrical organ system grade of organization and in platyhelminthes organ system grade of the organization is to be seen in case of the platyhelminthes animals are triploblastic with outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm on the behalf of that reason we can say that animals are triploblastic because body is divided into three parts outer ectoderm inner mesoderm middle is the mesoderm and inner is the endoderm acelomate and the meaning of the acelomate is they have no body cavity that means they have to be without body cavity and they are known as acelomates they are known as a cirrhodes the digestive system is incomplete or absent the digestive system is either in uh, incomplete or totally absent mostly they are parasites a few are free living examples of the platyhelminthes are liver fluke as well as stegosaurus these are the important examples of the platyhelminthes and the examples are liver fluke as well as chebom these are the examples of the platbom this is the example of platbom and the example is planaria second one is the liver fluke these are the eyes that are present in the planaria second this is the pharynx this is the pharynx this is the pharynx and here this is the mouth in case of the planaria this is the mouth and with the mouth literally it is attached with the anus this is planaria here this is the liver fluke and this is the branched uh, gastrovascular cavity that is present in case of planaria and in liver fluke this is the acetabulum this is the acetabulum this is the acetabulum 
But in case of tear bomb, in front, this is the spolex or the sucker, and after that, here it is the neck. So here these are the examples of the platyhelminthus such as liver fluke as well as tear bomb and these are the common examples of the flag bomb such as planaria, liver fluke as well as tear bomb. Next is nematoda. Next is nematoda. This is nematoda. These organisms have bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic and cylindrical body cavity and cylindrical body not body cavity but cylindrical body in case of nematoda these, uh, these organisms have bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic organisms as well as cylindrical body here again organ system grade of the organization is seen such as in case of the platyhelminthus so organ system level of the organization is seen in case of the nematode pseudosudom is present have a tubular digestive system with opening of both the ends. They have specially uh, type or special type of the digestive system that is a tubular digestive system. And in case of the tubular uh, digestive system, both the opening uh, that means both openings at the ends with openings at the ends. Dono trafse is the opening jo hogi wo, uh, hogi. that means both uh, with opening at both the ends. Dono ends per jo hogi wo kya hogi uski? opening hogi in case of the nematodes. So us level uh, digestive system ko jo hum bolenge, that is tubular digestive system. Or tubular digestive system a kaisa system hota hai jahan par with opening at both the ends. Dono ends per kya hogi? Opening hogi aur is ke digestive system ko kya hota hai? Tubular digestive system. Or ye tubular digestive system jo hai, it is present only in case of the nematodes. They are endoparasites. Mouth is provided with hooks and suckers. This is the most important feature of the nematodes. They are especially endoparasites and their body or the mouth, not body but mouth is provided with hooks as well as suckers. And the common examples of the nematodes are the ascaris, hookworm and flarial worm. All these are the examples of the nematodes such as ascaris, hookworm as well as flarial worm. And this is the diagram of the ascaris that is endoparasite of the human gut. This is ascaris and these are the two types of ascaris, male and female. This is the female ascaris and this is the male ascaris. And the major difference between the male and the female ascaris is the this is the anterior end of the male and this is the posterior end of the male. So here again, this is the posterior end of the female, and this is the and sorry, this is the anterior end of the female, and this is the posterior end of the female. And the uh, most important difference between the male ascaris as well as female ascaris is the male ascaris is shorter as compared to the female ascaris, and the male and in male ascaris, the posterior end is curved. This posterior end is curved, but in case of female the posterior end is not curved. This is the major difference between the male and the female ascaris. So here these are the most important examples of the nematodes such as ascaris, hookworm as well as filarian worm. Next is analida. Next is analida. These organisms have bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic. This is the most important feature of the analida that these uh, animals have specially bilaterally uh, body as well as triploblastic. So these are bilaterally symmetric as well as triploblastic. They are mostly aquatic and few are terrestrial. Mostly these are aquatic but uh, rest of them are the terrestrial. These are the first organisms to have true silom. That means true silom is only present in case of the Analida, and they are the first organisms where true silom is present. Silom is compartmentalized by the in intersegmental septa. There, their silom is compartmentalized by intersegmental septa. Body long and mathematically segmented 
segmentation from outside and inside the body segmentation is present both from outside the body as well as inside the body so here body long as well as mathematically segmented and segmentation from outside and inside of the body common examples of the annelida are leech earthworm etc all these are the examples of the annelida here this is the diagram of the earthworm this is the earthworm and this is the most common example of the annelida and this is the example of the annelida and the example is the leech leech as well as earthworm these are the most important or the popular examples of the annelida so here these have specially bilateral respiratory as well as triploblastic animals and they are mostly aquatic but rest of them are the terrestrial organisms and they are the first organisms which have the true sinom next is arthropoda next is arthropoda this is the largest phylum that means out of uh, rest of the phylums this arthropoda is the largest phylum with 80% of all non living animals so out of these or out of the rest phylums the most important or the most largest phylum is the phylum arthropoda with 80% of all the non living animals animals they have jointed appendages the most important feature of the arthropoda is that the appendages are jointed in greek arthropod jointed poda legs the body has three segments that is head thorax and abdomen body is divided into specially three segments or three regions and the three regions are head thorax as well as abdomen these are the three uh, regions or the three segments that are present in case of the arthropoda body is covered by exoskeleton and the exoskeleton is made up of chitin exoskeleton is made up of chitin body is made up of exoskeleton and that exoskeleton or body is covered by body is covered by exoskeleton and that exoskeleton is made up of chitin next these are the various examples of the arthropoda they are bilaterally symmetrical and they are bilaterally symmetrical and they have open circulatory system not closed circulatory system but they have open circulatory system compound eyes are present in case of arthropoda this is the most important feature of the arthropoda and the most important feature is that compound eyes are specially present in case of arthropoda common examples of the arthropoda are insects scorpion spider millipedes centipedes crab lobsters all these are the examples of the arthropoda so these are the various examples of the arthropoda such as insects scorpions spiders millipedes centipedes crabs lobsters butterfly all these are the examples of the arthropoda next is mollusca next is mollusca this is the most important phylum that is mollusca mollusca again have bilaterally symmetrical with reduced ceramic cavity and little segmentation segments are present in case of mollusca but little segmentation as compared to the rest of the phylum they have open circulatory system just as in case of arthropoda these are again have open type of the circulatory system and kidney like organs for the excretion the most important organ that is used for the excretion is the kidney body is soft their body is soft the organs that fall under the category of the mollusca they their body is soft and usually enclosed in a shell their body is totally enclosed in a shell the shell may be external or internal here it means that the shell is either external or internal they show the presence of foot mental and mental cavity they show the presence of foot mental and mental cavity 
Examples of the mollusca are pearl oysters, bivalves, sepia, octopus, snail, slug, etc. All these are the examples of the mollusca. Pearl oyster, bivalves, sepia, octopus, snail, slug, etc. All these are the examples of the mollusca. These are the molluscan animals. These are the various types of the molluscan animals. This is the molluscan animals. These are the various types of the molluscan animals. And here the body is divided into shells and shells may be either external or internal. Here this is the shell. Body is divided into shells and these shells may be either external or internal. This is again the shell. So the body of the molluscan animals is divided into shells and these shells may be either internal or external. So here all these are the examples of the molluscan animals. Next is Achinodermata. Next is Achinodermata. They are spiny skinned and free living exclusively marine. They are spiny skinned free living as well as exclusively marine. The animals are usually pantamerous. They are triploblastic and have ceramic cavity. The animals of the Echinodermata are triploblastic and they have the special type of the cavity is present in them and that cavity is known as ceramic cavity. They have water driven tube system. And this water driven system is specially used for moving forward, moving forward. With the help of this water driven tube system, their body is moved forward. With the help of this water driven tube system, their body is moving forward and they are moving forward with the help of this water driven tube system. And the common examples of the Echinodermata are starfish, sea urchin, sea cucumber, sea lily, etc. All these are the examples of the echinodermata such as starfish, sea urchin, sea cucumber as well as sea lily. So this is the example of the starfish. This is the example of the starfish. This is the example of the starfish. And the body is body is This is the example of the starfish. And they have water driven tube system. They have water driven tube system. And with the help of this water driven tube system, their body move forward. Tube system. And without these, uh, this water driven tube system, their body can't move forward. That means their body can move forward only with the help of this water driven tube system. Next is hemichordata. Next is hemichordates. After the completion of the previous phylum that is Achinodermata, now we shift to the hemichordates. Hemichordates is again bilaterally symmetrical. They are again bilaterally symmetrical and they are triploblastic. In case of the hemichordates, they are bilaterally symmetrical and they are again triploblastic. In addition to these, they have notochord present in them. And this notochord that runs along the back of the animals and separates the nervous tissue from the gut. With the help of this notochord that runs along the back of the animals and separates the nervous tissue from the gut. They are marine animals and bridge non chordates to chordates. Polyphra to Echinodermata. From Polyphra to Echinodermata are non chordates in vertebrates. Examples are Balanoglus, also called as Acorn Bomb. Balanoglus, also called as Acorn Bomb. So, Acorn Bomb. So, this is the example of the hemichordate and the example of the hemichordate is a corn bomb or balanoglossus. So this is the 
according to next is chordata vertebrata chordata vertebrata so in chordata vertebrata there is a presence of dorsal tubular and hollow nerve cord presence of notochord present of presence of pharyngeal gill slits presence of post anal tail bilaterally symmetrical body and presence of the three germ layers that is present in case of the chordata or the vertebrata organ system level of organization is present organ system level of organization is present presence of the ventral heart and hepatic portal system is present presence of well developed endocrine glands except for a few primitive forms the animals have vertebral column they have special except for a few primitive forms the animals have special vertebral column instead of the notochord notochord ki jagah par in mein jo ek special type ka column present hota hai that is the vertebral column these animals are also called as vertebrates so this is the chordate body plan this is a diagram of the chordate body plan here these are the these are the pharyngeal gill slits this is the brain this is the brain this is the dorsal hollow nerve cord and here this is the notochord this is the notochord this is the or these are the these are the these are the muscular segments and here this is the post anal tail this is the post anal tail and this is the anus this is the anus here this is the intestine and this is the heart and this is the pharynx and this is the mouth so this is the chordate body plan how the chordate body plan or what are the various organs are present in the chordate body plan next is pisces next is pisces class pisces includes all the bony and cartilaginous fishes all the bony as well as the cartilaginous fishes they fall under the category of the pisces they are exclusively aquatic they are not marine they are not terrestrial but all these are mostly aquatic body is streamlined with paired and unpaired fins both the paired as well as unpaired fins are present in case of the pisces and body is streamlined with paired as well as unpaired fins these are cold blooded vertebrates pisces are the cold blooded vertebrates and the heart is two chambered puchha jata hai bete ki fishes have either four chambered two chambered three chambered so here pisces uh, in case of the fishes these are specially two chambered ye two chambered hoti hai lateral line system is well developed in case of the pisces and the examples that fall under the category of the pisces is sharks rays rohu mrigal green carp etc all these are the examples of the pisces so these are the well developed examples of the pisces such as sharks rays rohu mrigal green carp etc next is amphibia and here amphibia amphibians live both land as well as water that means amphibians both live on the land as well as on the water and especially they lay their eggs in the water they lay their eggs in the water the respiration is through gills in case of the amphibia the respiration is especially through the gills in the larval stage and through lungs in the adults they are again cold blooded animals they are again cold blooded animals just same as that in case of the pisces and they have three chambered heart but in case of the pisces they have two chambered heart but in case of the amphibia they are three chambered heart and the examples of the amphibia are frog toads salamander etc all these are examples of the 
amphibia. Next is the reptilia. Next is the reptilia. Reptilia. These are the first completely land animals. That means all these reptilia, uh, those animals or those organisms which belong uh, with the reptilia, these are totally or completely land animals. Reptilia are again cold blooded animals and they breathe through their lungs. Reptilia, they are cold blooded animals and they breathe through their lungs. They are again three chambered heart, such as in case of the amphibia. And they are again three chambered heart, exception is in case of the crocodile. All the organisms that fall under the category of the reptilia, these are specially three chambered heart. But here the exception is only found in case of the crocodile. And lay eggs with tough covering. And lay eggs with tough covering. Body is covered with scales, scutes or hard plates. Examples of the reptilia, snakes, crocodiles, turtles, lizards, etc. All these are the examples of the reptilia such as snakes, crocodiles, turtles, lizards. All these are the examples of the reptilia and these are cold-blooded animals and they are three-chambered heart and only exception is to be found in case of the crocodiles. All these are the examples of the reptilia. All these are the various examples of the reptilia. And reptilia, I have told you, these are cold-blooded animals. And these have three-chambered heart. These have three-chambered heart. So these are the various types of the examples of the reptilia. Next is apes. Next is apes. All words belong to the all words belong to this class that is apes. Jitne bhi aapke words hai, wo sare ke sare words chunge, all they belong to the class apes. They are not cold blooded animals but they are warm blooded animals. Have four chambered heart, not two chambered, not three chambered but they have four chambered heart. And these breathe with the help of the lungs. They have their four limbs modified into wings which help in the flight. They have especially their four limbs and with the help of these four limbs and the four limbs are modified into the wings which help them in the flight. Jaws are modified into beaks. Jaws are modified into beaks. Bones are hollow and bones are hollow and most of them are fused to reduced body weight and exoskeleton is in the form of feathers. This is the most important feature of the ace that is an exoskeleton is in the form of feathers. Next is mammalia. Next is mammalia. They are warm blooded animals. Same just as the case of the ace. They are again warm blooded, breathe through the lungs and have four chambered heart. Jesse ki abhi apes me dekha ki wo bhi warm blooded animals hai. Breathe karte hai through the lungs and they have four chambered heart. Wohi in case of mammalia hai. They are warm blooded, breathe through the lungs as well as they have four chambered heart. Presence of hairs on their body. This is the most important feature in case of the mammalia. And the, this feature is presence of hair on the body. Sweat and oil glands, exclusive characters of the mammals. Presence of pinna, that is external hair, is also seen only in case of the mammals. They have the mammary glands, and these mammary glands to feed their young ones. Without these mammary glands, they can't feed their young ones. So this is the most important feature of the mammalia and all the mammalians they have the special type of the glands and these glands are known as mammary glands and with the help of these mammary glands they can feed their young ones. They usually give birth to the young ones. This is again the most important feature of the mammalia. Mammalia have the capability to produce the young ones or give birth to the young ones. 
Examples of the mainly are human, cattle, etc. These have the capability to give birth to the young ones and they have the special type of glands such as mammary glands and with the help of the mammary glands they can feed their young ones. So here beta, oh, we complete the kingdom animalia and this is our lecture number 2 regarding the chapter that is diversity in the living world or in our previous lecture we have already discussed uh, regarding the kingdom planta and today we complete kingdom animalia. So once again good night to all the students.